I don't know if it's been mentioned by other panels, but we are kind of reinventing the season a little bit this year, not as much on the scale of an American Horror Story, mm -hmm. where they completely change everything and recast, but we are bringing a bunch of our characters and our situations into a new environment, into a new location. Um, and where's that location? Uh, I, I don't want to say right now, although I've heard that it's been being bandied about a little bit, but um, <laughs> we're going to a new place. And okay. Part of the what we always talked about at the beginning of the show um, was if we got subsequent seasons to be able to to not have to stay in in one place, which is why we forced our hand by blowing up the base at the end of last season. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to go back there. Yeah. As, as fun as it was, it would be hard to sustain. So our idea is that we're taking a time jump. Time has passed, and we're getting into a new scenario in a new place. Um, there, there will be a new pathogen. We will not abandon the Narvik. It is there, but we're going to be dealing with. We're, we're kind of resetting the table a little bit and then bringing our folks into it, hopefully in really good and surprising ways. Is it related to the original packaging at all? Um, there, was a, there are a lot of things that are related. Certainly the motivations for it are related, but we have kind of a, a new take on things that I think will um, kind of be cool and surprising. And then you're in a new environment, so mm -hmm. is, is that like liberating in a way? Totally liberating, yeah. But challenging too. It is, but but it's it, we we have a great location that I'm very excited about, and so that is the, the best part of this. Is last year, because we were shooting Montreal for the Arctic, we had to every time we, we every time we looked out a window, it was green screen shot with some visual effects, which looked very good, I thought. And then every time we went outside, we had soap bubbles blowing around as snow and a big green screen, and we couldn't really see too far because um, we weren't we were in Montreal in the summer. And so we couldn't play those, those great kind of Fargo, you know, snow scenes because we didn't have them. And so for us, being able to walk outside and shoot, being able to look out a window and see something really cool, I, I'm just in heaven right now because I just saw the first camera test from the location. And I'm just like, oh, thank God, it's a big location and there's just a lot of cool stuff and it's awesome. So really looking forward to that. Cool. So what can you sneak about any uh, upcoming characters? I think he said that there was going to be a new person from the CDC. There's a new person from the CDC that, that is coming in who will have his own kind of interesting backstory. And we're casting that character right now, so we don't know who, who exactly it is yet. I wish we could announce, but we don't know. Um, we'll also have um, a bunch of new characters. Because we're in, the, in this new location, we're going to have a, a whole slew of new people that will be um, and a really interesting take, I think, that um, Ron and I talked about with the network very early on and said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if, you know, we pitched this idea to them of going to this, this place and the people they would meet there and what was going on and how we get into it. Um, and it'll feel, I think you'll recognize the tone of the show, I think you'll recognize the, you know, certainly the, the characters, but it'll feel like, wait, is this, he this is Helix, right? Because there's no snow and there's, you know, um, uh, it, there's so many new elements that it'll feel like uh, it's like a, a, a sibling in a way, but it's like the characters who I know, so. So at the end of season one, we see that uh, Julia has been taken in a helicopter, we mm -hmm. see her in Paris, and uh, so Hero is her father. Do we see any kind of reunion with them in season two? Because I know he was desperate to have that connection with her. Right, right. Um, I don't want to say exactly how, but Hero is definitely coming back. Um, the how and the why of that is, is you know, we're going to keep it under our hat right now. Uh, I think it will be really cool and surprising. Um, we're trying some new things structurally with the show. We definitely want to keep to the one day per episode kind of feel of the show, but at the same time, we want to be adventurous with our structure. And so, you know, last season, episode 13, we jumped ahead seven months. Um, there is a world in which we jump all over the place in time while still keeping maintaining the structure of the show. So we want to uh, really keep you off balance uh, and hopefully surprise in a good way and not like, oh, what are they doing? You've done a good job with that already, believe me. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, you know, you had Jerry Ryan last year come in, uh, kind of give like another adrenaline shot to a pretty intense show. Uh, is there a plan to bring somebody else in this year? Yeah, uh, we definitely, I mean, we're going to bring in this new CDC character. We also have a new uh, part we're casting um, who's, who's a big, kind of mysterious antagonist, um, similar to Otaki. Um, but again, we're just being very kind of cagey about it right now. Um, so yes, we're going to inject some new blood in, but then we also want to bring back characters. Um, and I, I've been saying this at other tables too, um, being dead on Helix means you're dead. I mean, it's not like you can be reanimated and come back to life. That being said, we play hallucinations, we play flashbacks, and we play, you know, all sorts of uh, kind of jumping around in time and structure and states of mind. So just because someone died last year doesn't mean we don't get to see them again, which I love. Yeah, because usually you know it's like oh it's, it's it's a shame, and this year it's like ooh could we bring back so and so? That's very interesting. 
is there going to be an expansion on um, Sarah's character because she and uh, Alan they they have there she's she's pregnant yep. so is there going to be an expansion on her character because yeah, I I you said there's there a time jump yes, yeah I can promise there will be an expansion on that that actually figures very prominently in our mythology oh. um, and but I think when you when you tune in to watch the the first episode of the season you may be going what's happening here um, but believe me it's there. Um, and we're really excited about it. It's something, I think it's one of the best ideas we've come up with this season, yeah. is just sort of the arc of, of how that plays out. I'm so excited for season two. Thank you. Very excited. And so are we. I mean, we're, it's, it's a really different type of show for me. Mm -hmm. uh, more, more so than anything I've worked on, there's a lot of mythology and a lot of serialization. More serialized than anything else I've ever done. But then we're also allowed to sci-fi, and so great Sony, and letting us just go, you know, crazy. We don't have a ton of money. And they say, okay, so just creatively, you know, surprise us. Be weirder, be, you know, more deranged, and, you know, come up with stuff that's really surprising. And it's like, yeah, you know, who would love that? So yeah. that's, that's the best part. Well, the show itself, uh, when I first saw the, the pilot, you know, I was a little skeptical because, you know, pathogens, right. you know, the movie's contagion and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. And but now then, especially, I mean, with The Strain and with yeah. all these other shows, there, there's a lot of the stuff out there. Yeah, well, with last season, you know, um, some of the movies that had come out with, you know, pathogens and things like that, I wasn't sure how I was going to gravitate towards it. But after, like, the first episode, I, I, I was like, I have to see what happens. I love that. Because it was just so yeah. intense. You. Yeah. The characters draw you in. The actors are great. So it's just such a great show. And, I mean, every week I had to I had to watch. <laughs> That's great. Thanks. Well, I hope you feel the same way this year because we really want to keep that same feeling of kind of propulsion and, like, big cliffhangers and not knowing where the show's going to go with um, some nice character moments and, and you know, I mean, Dore it's, it's funny, Doreen said at the beginning of last season, this is the most fractal family reunion ever, and it is, in a way. If you really went back and think, we thought about that in the room, we were like, this is the most, most messed up family reunion you've ever been to, and we definitely want to keep that alive and yeah. keep that going. It's about dysfunctional people. And I'm still upset about Doreen getting killed. Still so are we. Can I tell you, the <laughs> yeah. thing about Doreen that we didn't know is that how wonderful Cat was going to be. Um, so in the beginning, there was no Doreen in the original pilot. In the original pilot, there was no Doreen. So we were like, we really want no one to be safe, so we're going to kill a character. So who do we kill? We love everybody. We'll create a new character. We'll call her Doreen and we'll kill her in episode four. So we did that, and then we started writing her, and she was kind of funny and quirky. And then we cast Cat, and then we saw her in Dailies, and we are like, oh, crap, she's great. And it was already done. <laughs> it's like we had already gone down the road. We we're, were like, we, you know, nothing we can do about it. So, unfortunately, you know, that happened. But that being said, you know, just because you're dead on Helix doesn't mean you're never seen again. Yeah.